Well, good day, everyone. It's Russ Barkley, and I'm back on the air. I bet you wondered where I went, because I didn't publish any research last Saturday. Uh, and there's a good reason for that. Uh, we've been doing some construction up in my office and study, and also some painting, and that just finished last night, Sunday night, believe that. Oh, in case you don't believe me, have a look. Look over here. You see that window? That used to be open. That used to be a loft. And we closed it off with a nice sliding window and then had the office repainted and all that good stuff. Hopefully I'm back in focus here. Uh, so the uh, second thing I wanna mention to you is that from now on in the research reviews, the description that goes with this video, I'm only gonna be listing the articles that I actually talk about in the review. I used to list all the research that I found that week, but that's getting to be a bit tedious. I don't think any of you are really looking at that stuff anyway. Uh, it takes me a lot of time to put that list together. So let's just talk about uh, in the description, I have the hot links for the articles I'm discussing, okay? So, all right, thanks, really appreciate that. Let's get started. Of course, we always begin with a dad joke, and today's dad jokes come from the website for harryanddavid.com. And here's one I really love. What kind of shoes do frogs wear? Open toed. <laughs> okay, uh, when does a joke become a dad joke? when it becomes apparent. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. You can have, have a look at many more of these dad jokes over at harryanddavid.com. All right, guys, uh, we have five studies to talk about today. And the first one up, a very important study. This one comes out of Germany. It's a huge study of the German population, particularly those with ADHD. It is looking at 87,000 394 individuals with ADHD, and it's gonna look at the somatic disorders, the medical conditions that developed in these individuals across the lifespan. And it broke the group into children, into teens and young adults, and then into those 30 to 59 and 60 years of age and older. Uh, no worries about the age groups, that'll become important later, however, when we talk about these results. This was published over in the journal Acta Psychiatrica Scandinavicus, uh, but it was with the German population. So what did they find across the lifespan linked to ADHD? Well, a lot of the things we've already talked about on this channel, but it just reaffirms those earlier findings. That's what I love about good science involves replication. And if findings don't replicate, then they're not reliable, they're not robust, and they're probably not valid. Uh, but when they replicate, and they keep replicating, particularly in large samples like this, uh, it likely means something. So what did they find? Specifically, they found an increased risk, first of all, for Parkinson's disease in those with ADHD, about five times the risk, by the way. Also an increased risk for later dementia, about twice the risk that was seen in the typical population. Now, again, we don't know if this is related to severity of ADHD. Uh, in other words, most people with ADHD don't get these, but the most severe conditions do. Uh, it doesn't look like it's related to taking stimulant medication, though they did not examine that in their data set, unfortunately. Uh, so the risks are there. We just can't necessarily interpret correlations like this as causation. But what we can say is they're certainly linked to each other. And of course, they found that there was a more than double the rate of sleep-related problems reported by these individuals with ADHD than in the general population. We've known about that. Up to 40% of children and adults, maybe more, report sleeping difficulties. Finally, they reported a number of autoimmune disorders linked to ADHD involving the musculoskeletal system, the digestive system, and the endocrine system. Such things, for instance, as fibromyalgia, three times more common in people with ADHD. And by the way, the rate's higher in women than men, according to prior research. They also found twice the risk for lupus as well. So uh, again, you can see that there are links to various somatic disorders 
and ADHD across the lifespan. I've used this before to argue that ADHD is a public health problem, not just a psychological, educational, or psychiatric disorder. It's a public health disorder. It also shows, once again, that ADHD, because it is neurobiological, is linked to other neurobiological problems in individuals with the disorder. By the way, they did find that people with ADHD seem to have an earlier onset of these various conditions than did the general population. And just as important, no sex differences emerged in these comparisons. So uh, they're talking about they weren't prominent at all. So that, that's important because we hear a lot about uh, ADHD in women is qualitatively different than ADHD in men. Well, not really. It isn't. What does differ often are the psychiatric comorbid disorders. Uh, we can talk about that some other time. So uh, a very nice paper out of Germany there on the link of ADHD to somatic problems. All right, let's move on and talk about another study. This one published over in the International Journal of Mental Health and Addiction. This is a study using a very large sample here in the United States, over 28,500 ADHD patients were involved in this particular study. What did they find? Uh, this is examining whether or not treatment with stimulant medication increases or decreases the risk for substance use disorders in adults. As you know, there's a lot of nonsense and misconceptions out there about if you give stimulants to children with ADHD, they have a higher risk for stimulant abuse later in life. Nada. We have over 20 studies showing that is not true. But still we hear this idea that treating with a stimulant sensitizes people to later substance use problems, particularly for stimulants. So what did they find here? They found that individuals with ADHD treated with CNS stimulants were far less likely to develop a substance use disorder, about 25 to, uh, excuse me, about 15 to 25 percent less likely than individuals not treated with a stimulant. They also found that stimulant treatment resulted in the individual going for longer periods of time before they might have developed a substance use disorder. And also treatment with the stimulant resulted in a reduction in the use of inpatient services and emergency room services. Uh, and of course, that's because it's reducing not only substance use problems, but as we've talked about earlier on this channel, it reduces the risk for accidental injuries of all types. So uh, another paper showing that treatment with medication is helpful to individuals with ADHD, in this case, in reducing the risk for substance use problems. So once again, no evidence that treating with stimulants increases risk for substance use. It decreases it. Okay, let's move on to our third paper. We're going to talk about this one very quickly. This is published over in uh, the journal Epilepsia Open, uh, and it is a study, uh, a meta-analysis of the risk of ADHD in children with epilepsy. They reviewed 46 articles and included them in their meta-analysis, so a huge database of research here that was combined into an analysis. And what did they find? Nearly 31% of children with epilepsy were also likely to have ADHD as a comorbidity. Again, that's replication. We've known that there's a relationship between the two disorders. People with epilepsy are twice as likely to have ADHD. This meta-analysis says that risk is even higher than that. And we also know that people with ADHD are also more likely to have epilepsy, about twice the risk for epilepsy in that disorder. So it's a two-way street between these two disorders. And no surprise about that. ADHD is neurobiological. ADHD is certainly neurological. And because of that, it would carry a risk for other neurological conditions along with it and vice versa. Other neurological conditions might predispose to ADHD as well. So some broader implications of this review than just prevalence of ADHD in children with epilepsy. Moving on to paper number four, 
The next two papers deal with cognitive disengagement syndrome, that new attention disorder that I've talked about on this channel before, uh, and comparing it to ADHD. Both of these studies come out of Turkey, uh, where some colleagues of mine have been studying both conditions. Uh, I served on a consultant to a couple of these projects, by the way. So what did they find in this study of the neuropsychological functions and metacognition of children with these two attention disorders. They found, and I'll just summarize it pretty quickly here, they found that children with cognitive disengagement syndrome had more metacognitive awareness, more self-awareness than children with ADHD did. Children with ADHD uh, are often found to be deficient in self-awareness, metacognitive awareness compared to controls. This suggests that they're not only deficient compared to controls, they're deficient compared to children with cognitive disengagement syndrome who appear to be more aware of themselves than ADHD individuals, but slightly less aware of themselves than control children. So very important. Also, what they found here is that compared to ADHD, the children with CDS were more emotionally sensitive, as reported by parents, than were children with ADHD or than control children. So uh, that's an important finding because what we're seeing here is called a double dissociation. And that's important in science. Things are linking up with one disorder that are not found in the other disorder and may even be negatively associated with that other disorder. And that shows that the disorders are qualitatively different. Even if they're found at some point to overlap, they're not the same disorders. So cognitive disengagement syndrome is not the same as ADHD and quite, quite different from it, but it can overlap with it. And this shows that there are some qualitative differences in kids with CDS. More metacognitive awareness, more emotionally sensitive than individuals with ADHD. About that emotional sensitivity, by the way, previous research suggested that uh, people with ADHD are less emotionally sensitive than others, even if they are more emotionally reactive. When they are provoked, they're much more quick to react with something, but that doesn't mean that they're more sensitive to stress or distress, contrary to theories like that of uh, uh, Gabor Mate and others at ADHD kids are very sensitive individuals, uh, not really. Uh, but this suggests that kids with CDS may be more emotionally sensitive and they've been found to be more prone to reactions to distress in other studies of psychophysiological measures of distress and stress in uh, people with CDS. So, okay, the last paper also on CDS. This is on the relationship of parental obsessive compulsive disorder to the degree of CDS in offspring. This also is a paper out of Turkey. Uh, this one was published over in Clinical Child Psychology and Psychiatry. And what they found is that the greater number of symptoms of OCD in parents was linked to greater inattention in their children and especially greater symptoms of CDS. We've talked about CDS possibly involving rumination, mind wandering, pathological daydreaming, and mind blanking. Remember, CDS is a pattern of attention that is more inwardly directed. The individual is becoming disengaged from their environment and more preoccupied with mental content. Whereas ADHD is the opposite. It is more engaged with the environment and less engaged with mental content. So uh, again, some very nice papers furthering our understanding of CDS as a different attention disorder than we see in ADHD. Okay, that's it for this week. Again, my apologies for being a little late this week, but we had a lot of construction going on on the house this weekend, so I couldn't record. But now I am back, and hopefully we'll be posting some commentaries for you later this week, and of course, another research summary next weekend. So thanks everybody for joining me on this channel, and be well.